Okay, what's up guys and girls? Welcome back. So today, as you can see, I got the ethanol content sensor in and running. It's reading percentage, it's adjusting properly. Uh, it's been a couple days in the making shooting this video and I spent quite a bit of time at the junkyard and doing a lot of research over the last few days because when I originally hooked it up, it didn't work. So I wanna go over that, how to, I'll show how to install it what I did to get it to work because it didn't read the sensor and a couple other things that I learned along the way. So let's get started. And what we're gonna do now is go pick up some E85. So we'll do the ethanol content sensor today, but I wanna get some E85 in a couple cans so I can keep it at home and put it in when I'm done because it'll probably be kind of late and I'm not gonna wanna leave later tonight. So let's get some gas. Dun, 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 dun! Cans. I can't see your head. We're gonna get some corn. That's not corn, it's gas. It's corn. I didn't know that. Okay, so now that we got the fuel, let's get started on this thing. So this is the sensor. I just have some 3 eighths to dash six AN fittings that go on each end. Some dash six to push lock fittings. So I don't have three ace push lock hose. So I'm just gonna slide these over and clamp them on. These uh, burrs on here are pretty rowdy. So they hold a lot. Here's the plug. We're gonna do a switched 12 volt power here, a ground on the black. And then this is going to go to the PCM, this is going to go to pin 56 on the blue plug. This is a P59 PCM. This is going to go to pin 56. And that's what's going to tell the computer what to do. Okay, so first thing I first thing I did was mock this up on the fuel return line and cut a section of the return line out. So here you can see I have a section cut out. Here's one section, here's the other one. So that is going to go right in here. All right, so here we go. It's all installed now. I did prime this thing already. I didn't run the truck yet, but I did prime it about four times. It doesn't leak at all. So this thing is pretty much set, ready to go. I'm probably gonna zip tie it or something, secure it against the rest of the stuff. But I'll just have to put the plug on now and then wire it up. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the wiring portion of this little doohickey and this video is probably going to be a lot longer than I was planning on it because I was just going to do some basic like wiring, like, yep, stuff it in the ECU, hook it to the battery, and we'll be good with it. But I wasn't really happy with that. I didn't want to run any extra wires, so I, I looked into it a little bit more. And here's what I'm going to do. I found my, my neutral safety switch for the transmission. I'm not actually using that right now. I don't have it hooked up, and I wanted to tap into that because it's right where the thing is sitting and I found a power or ground and a wire that goes all the way back to the PCM. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repin one of the wires to a different pin on the computer and then hook the positive and negative up to the power and ground signal that we're going to, to the neutral safety switch for the transmission and should work pretty sweet. So this is just gonna be very hard to get a video of. So this pin right here, this one over here in the center is number one. And then on the bottom side, it goes two, three, four, five, six. So the red doohickey is in the number six pin. This top one over here is number seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And that's how it's set up when you look at it on the wiring diagrams. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna take this number six, which is a gray wire on the back side, right here, it's gray. Uh, but you can't really tell because it's old and nasty. So I'm going to take this one. This is the selector switch C wire or something like that. Selector switch position C. Something like that. So this one goes all the way back to the PCM into pin number, pin number 62. Into pin number 62 on the green plug. So let's go check that out. Okay, so just for reference... I have it set up on the continuity buzzer, so I'll be able to check from that wire all the way over here to the computer. And I'm going to go to pin number 62 on the green plug. And you hear that thing beep? So that wire 
is going from the plug on the other side over to here. So this one I'm going to repin and I'm going to put it in pin number 56, I believe it is, on this one. And that should be the flex fuel setup. So that's the one I'm going to use for the signal going back to the computer. So I'm going to repin this wire, put it in this plug, and that'll send the signal back. So now let's look at the power and ground. So now we have the same plug, except I have one of the leads put into the number one. So this ends up being a black wire. I believe it's black white on the diagram, but this one right now is just it's just a black wire on this side. So this one is a ground, the number one. So now when I take this other lead and I put it on something that is a ground, but I'm gonna do it on the exhaust over here. You see that continuity? When I go to the exhaust, or even the the pan here. Anything that's a ground have continuity because this is hooked up to this this is hooked up to this number one spot which is this black wire right here. So that's going to be my ground and then what I'm going to do for the positive is I'm going to take this this pink wire pink or purple or whatever it is on the diagram they both look pink so this one is a 12 volt positive ignition source and this one is a 12 volt positive so that's the uh, number 12 this one here so if we hook this bad boy up in the number 12 because that's the power and then we hook this bad boy up in the ground I got the wires backwards guys don't judge me come on all right so let's let's show this in one clip now so this way they have the number seven hooked up. This one's actually the ground. This one's the positive. I got the wires backwards. Like I said, don't judge me. Okay, because this is the fourth time I shot this clip, this is the key right there. That is where the key is, so I can find it. Multimeter is on DC volts right now. We don't show any voltage. I'm gonna go underneath with all the leads. All the leads to the plug. I got these in the right color order now. This is the number seven pin, which is the ground. There's a black wire on the top. And this wire here, this pin hole, is the number 12 on the diagram. And this one is like this pink wire here. So what I want to show now is when I turn the key, get this hooked up just like this, we're going to see 12 volt, and I can probably even put this up here, and I turn the key on, we'll have 12 volts, 11.8, so that's 12 volt ignition source, key on, key off, turns off, perfect. All right, so I took this wire, this is the gray wire. This is the gray wire for the transmission range switch signal C coming from the transmission neutral safety switch plug. So this was originally in uh, pinhole number 62 on the green connector, which was over here, pin number 62. So I took it out of there and then put it into pin number 56 on the blue plug. So now I'll reconnect these and we'll test it all out. All right, so here's what it looks like underneath. Got everything all zip tied up. Wiring is all good. The plug is kind of tucked around the backside. If you look here, got this sensor all buttoned up in there nicely. Secured. Plugged in, ready to go. All right, so to add this content sensor to the scanner, we're gonna go over to our channels list over on the left side, add channel, and I'm gonna type in alcohol. So we have alcohol percent composition sensor. It's under fuel system composition and alcohol percent. Double click that thing. It's highlighted green, so that means that it's actually in the list somewhere. So there we have alcohol percent down there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here, right click, charts layout, 
I'm going to go down here to group three because that's where I want to put it up here to add a series. I'm going to add a series to group three. New series. The series label is going to be, uh, let's call it elk percent. I'm just being picky right now, but I'm going to do like that. Insert or change for the parameter. And we're going to do the same thing. Alcohol. Alcohol composition sensor. Alcohol composition at sensor. And let's see. Let's see. Generic sensors. Let's try alcohol percent. Let's see what this one does. Yes, yeah, sounds good. All right, we'll have a zero to 100 for our limits. I already have a white one in there, so maybe we'll maybe we'll change this color to like a red. Let's try that. Change it to a red. Okay. Now we got a red color. So that should be good. Let's see what this thing does. Okay, so we got 11.3% and it said the same percentage the last few times that I turned it on. So what I want to do is try to dump some fuel in there and see if the percentage actually changes. So this video here is actually sped up quite a bit, but you can see that in the red the alcohol percentage is increasing, in the purple does the commanded air fuel ratio. So as the alcohol percentage comes up, the commanded air fuel ratio changes and starts to come down based on what it's commanding in the tables. So this is just kind of checking to make sure that's working properly. So I went in here, and this is, I'm going to show you two different tunes. So this one is disabled. This is like factory disabled, and it shows 0% here. One would think you could just go in and enable this and put in the settings and it would work once you wrote the tune, but apparently there's some stuff going on behind the scenes that doesn't allow that to happen that way. So this is one file. Here's another one. So this is uh, ends up being a factory enabled tune that you need to start with in order for this to happen. So basically after you get everything hooked up and enabled it in the tune, put the percentage to, in the scanner to log it, it just shows a 0%. So it shows up, but it shows 0%. It doesn't adjust anything, doesn't do anything. So that's why I started looking into stuff a little bit more and then learned about that. So you can't just enable it, as I said. So there's a couple different things out there. There's some a lot of information that says you can do a segment swap from a factory flex enabled tune that has the same operating system ID number but then again there's a lot of information out there that says you can't do that so I actually got a different computer a different p59 and I want to test it uh, just to see if it works or how it works some are saying that you can do the segment swap and then it'll show the percentage but it doesn't actually adjust properly so what I ended up doing was getting a different file finding a different file I used uh, one of the sloppy mechanics p59 three bar Colorado tunes and licensed that, wrote it into the computer and everything seemed to be working after that. But it took me a while to figure that out and then eventually try it. So yeah, I basically just wrote that file in and then took every single parameter that was in the tune and then copied it over to the new one. So everything that was in my old file that was actually running the truck with, uh, I copied all that stuff over and it ran fine. So I didn't t copy everything over. I like left some stuff in there. I was kind of selective about what I copied over. Like I didn't copy the VE table over because I wanted to kind of start fresh. And it was like all whacked out. It didn't work. So then said screw it. Went through every single one of them. All the engine codes, uh, like the DTC codes, changed all those, changed every single thing of it and put it back over and it ran fine. The only thing I did differently for the engine codes is I turned on this 178 and 179 flex fuel sender circuits. Turn those on. So, no issues after that, but I did spend quite a bit of time at the junkyard doing some flex fuel research, we'll call it. So, I learned a few things. I wanted to share that with you guys. So, I did pick up two other computers, um, and I'm going to use these for something else. So, don't be all huffy that I bought computers. But uh, this one says, 
2003 Suburban 5.3 Flex, and I crossed it off and said no, because when I actually opened this thing up, it was uh, the VIN numbers from a 2002 GMC Sierra. So this one, I'll actually show a picture of it. Uh, this was sitting in a 2003 Suburban with flex fuel, and it wasn't hooked up though. So it was a little, it's the 0411 PCM. So this thing was sitting in the engine bay but it wasn't actually hooked up to the wire harness. So I was a little bit sketched out by that, and I was like, ah, it's not hooked up. It's just kind of sitting there. It could be from a different truck, but I took a chance on it. I used to use it at the junkyard. They're like 20 bucks a piece, so I didn't really think that was that big of a deal. And I took a chance on it, ended up not being from the right truck. So it wasn't the Flex Fuel PCM, and, but now I have an extra one. So the other one that I got is another P59 from an 04 Express. So that one is the exact same computer that's in the truck right now from a 2004 Express, um, but it doesn't have flex fuel enabled from the factory. So it's the literally the exact same computer that I have in there right now. I got something kind of cool I want to do with those. So that's another P59 that I might be able to test that segment swap thing and see how it works. I was told a few different things about it, but I'm kind of the kind of person I just want to test it and see for myself if it see if it works or not. So, so I started doing uh, a little bit more research while I was actually at the junkyard. I think I was there for like four hours. Uh, spent a lot of time walking around doing different things. My original thought on the flex fuel vehicles was that they had that different rail, like the metal rail versus the plastic rails. I learned that that is not true. So did a little bit more research, found that out, and I, went, I started looking for everything that was like 2002 to 2005 with the VIN number that had a eighth, the eighth letter was a Z. So I found something that said the eighth number being a Z indicates that it's flex fuel. So that eighth digit code is the engine code. So the eighth digit being a Z code is the, the L59, which is the flex fuel version of the LM7. So those are in the years like 2000 to 2006, 2007, depending what the vehicle is. And like the Avalanches, the Yukons, and uh, some of the Silverados out until 2007. So that'd be an easy way to just get a visual if you don't know if you look by looking at it. Look at the VIN code, eighth digit is a Z, L59, flex fuel. Because a lot of the vehicles like at the junkyard, they're all ripped apart. Some don't have the fuel rails even on them. Some are missing the gas doors. Some of them have the stickers in the gas door that says E85. But if you didn't have like a rail on it, but the computer's still sitting there, which happens a lot, you could check that VIN code. Z. So it also has a different style rail. So I'll show you some pictures of that. There's like a steel rail versus uh, almost looks like an aluminum rail. It's the same kind of concept and design, but it's a different metal material. So a visual check to see which one has flex fuel because they kind of look the same. They look very close, but they have a little bit of a different rail. The one has the non-flex fuel has the plastic rails and the the steel crossover, which gets all rusty and corroded and junky. The other ones with the flex fuel, they don't look like that and they're like pretty shiny and still in good condition because it's a different material. So kind of threw me off a little bit at first because I spent a lot of time looking at them. I'm like, oh, these are all the same. But then noticed that and then figured out the VIN number thing. So just wanted to share that. Uh, I know I spent a lot of time researching it to figure that out. So I wanted to share that with you guys. If you're ever looking around, uh, the 2006 I saw did have the actual square flex fuel rails on it. There was one 2006 Suburban. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something or enjoyed the video. If you did, share it. Stick around for the next one.